Hi, I'm John Greger. And I'm Tabitha Greger, and we're the new owners of the Peak Building. And today, um, we're going to do some tours of all the buildings. We're going to start with the Peak Building because it's generated the most interest. And the first thing we'd like to start with is talking about the levels of the Peak Building. So, there's a little bit of a discrepancy about how many floors exist on the Peak Building because as we walk around the building here in a minute, you're gonna see that it looks like there's three levels, but there's four um, separate doors. So there's two doors, well, there's actually five total doors because there's two doors on the front. Those go to the main floor of the peak building. And as we walk up this hill here, you're gonna see there's a second door here. And that one actually goes to what we've uncovered as a mezzanine level. But from that, you can also go upstairs to some second floor apartments. So you'll see that when we get inside. And the building wraps around. And this is going to be actually the door to uh, one big level suite, but it's on floor two, but it's actually door number three. So as you can see, that's kind of what confuses some people. And then finally, the third top floor is all accessed from this door. Now, what we do know about the building, and we're still trying to uncover some facts about it, is that um, this building was built by J.C. Gibson, and he does still have relatives living in the area, but he had went to San Francisco to visit his sister when the major earthquake happened out there, and he stayed because he had a background in construction, and he learned how to use this technique when he was in San Francisco, and he came back, and as you can see across the road, there's the Appalachia Cultural Arts Building. That building was built as a new furniture store to replace what was here in this space before the Peak building was built, and they moved the furniture store over there. And then Mr. Peak came by and built this, we're thinking about 1920, seems to be. And an interesting um, fact about Mr. Gibson is he also designed Peggy Castle's house, which is um, the actress who built a home here in Appalachia. She was originally from Appalachia, for, uh, Appalachia, Virginia. But he owned Home Builder Supply and Gibson Lumber Supply. And so uh, he provided all the materials for that. But this is in some ways the most interesting building in town. So, well, I, I know I hit my Siri. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna let uh, John take over and kind of talk a little bit about some of the structural parts of this building and why it is so unique. So, do you want the flashlight like a pointer? <laughs> no, I don't. Let me pull out my notes. Okay. So, um, this building was built around 1920, 1922, and anybody knows construction was a different kind of construction. When they laid concrete, it was a lot more, um, it, was, it had a harder density than um, the concrete it gets laid today. Um, well, unless you specifically want that kind of density. So the foundations on this thing, this thing is really solid. The brickwork is really solid. Everything that's, you know, went on in 1920 is still in pretty good shape. You get your, you got your normal weathering around the top edge of the building. You can, if he'll pan up there, you can see some of the bricks are missing. And you can see right there in that corner that somebody's come in and tried to patch it, you know. But look at that. That's a different kind of construction than what was originally here. So... So, and they've closed in some windows and stuff, and we're trying to bring all of the original um, aspects of the building back. Um, so, and it's great to look at this detail work, the little diamond inlay up there. And then if you get around, when you get around to the front, they have some herringbone stuff, you know. So these were real craftsmen, guys that, guys that knew what they were doing, and they were good at it, you know. So I guess it was, what's his name? The Gibson. Gibson. So I'm sure he had lots of help, but he directed the people in how to do it. Um, and like Tabitha said, this, this level right here is our mezzanine level. And when we go inside, you'll be able to see. But of course, the reason that the building was in the Guinness Book of World Records is because all four levels of entrances all exit to what is the same street. It's Virginia Avenue. 
Um, but his great great grandson told me that they actually built the building and the steps and then the town built the road around the building later. I kind of thought it was the opposite, but that's what he says um, is the family's history on the building. Some other original aspects of it, you cannot see right now, but with that white space above top, the um, vertical white space, those are actually windows behind that, and those are original to the building, and we'll be uncovering those. And then if you look at the awning here, that's also original to the building, and we think Maybe because there was a hotel next to us that this was the bus stop and that's what the original uh, reason for that. Because it does kind of cover up some of the um, architectural um, parts of the building. But also currently right now, it's protecting people from getting hit in the head with bricks. So you can see some of the bricks on top. So we're gonna keep that up just for a little while at least and then have it remade. But I uh, just wanted to n annotate some of that original aspect right there. I um, wanted to speak a little bit about the uh, entrances to the building. It's got a corner entrance and then a street entrance, so two entrances. And if you look up, if you can get up in here, you can see the uh, transom windows that are up in here. They've just been painted over, and some of them have been broken, and they have wood on, on the back side of them and stuff. But uh, this is just siding that's covering up uh, on the awning that's covering all the windows from the outside but still has the original lighting that was input, you know, I'm sure later than 1920, um, probably around the 30s, 40s, 50s time frame. But some, some of the original aspects and the brass um, trim is still intact all the way around the building too. So that's pretty neat. This is the main entrance. We come just around the corner about 25 feet. This is the main entrance to the building. Still has all that brass intact and you can see how the transom windows kind of curve around and the original tile uh, ceiling, the, uh, the metal tile ceilings are up there. So just another thing that we'll uh, trying to bring back and they've done something to this. So I'm, I'm guessing there's, there was glass behind this too because they, the whole storefront looks like it, it was just glassed all in. It was all glassed yeah, in. Yeah, would have provided a lot of natural light. So if you come over here and look back, you can actually see um, there was the awning here, but all of this siding was not there in the original pictures. This has all been installed fairly, yeah, you when can, I say recently, I mean 30 years ago maybe. You can see the awning uh, supports that are into the original part of the building, and then they brought the siding up to do that. But it would have been open, so there was a lot of natural light in this, in this building, and that's the way it was built, so. Yeah. So now we're inside the building and we have already taken out, it was about a nine foot drop ceiling and you, we haven't got to the wires um, in the top yet because they're all nailed in. So we want to be kind of careful when we're taking those out. They are 15 and a half foot ceilings. Um, and I ran a tape measure up to the, to the old steam um, pipes to see and then it's another foot above those. So it's 14 and a half here, 15 and a half foot ceilings. But there's a lot of the original aspects left, like the steam pipes that heated the building. Right here is, is an example of that. There are probably one of these in every apartment almost. So they still have some of the original implements of how they heated um, the building. Um, and as you can see, there's been a lot of stuff, plumbing and stuff added throughout the years and we'll be taking that out. I won't even say reworking it. I, I, it's going to be a total, we're going to take that out and put it somewhere else. Now the original plumbing, we've, I found the spot where it came down. And so this is the original um, iron pipes, water supply that they would have had at some point, you know, to whenever they got it. And then this is the original. So they built it into the building and it still has a lot of the iron um, plumbing still in here. Um, they've retrofitted with PVC at some point on some things, but a lot of the iron stuff is still in here. We won't be able to use that, but we'll be able to use the cavities that they used for that. So, and then if you look in here, it looks like it's a mess. If you would have seen it a week ago, we couldn't walk, you know, but about this far in here because the whole um, room was just filled with debris, furniture, you know, garbage. I, I, I don't know, just think of it as, as a lot of stuff. 
So we've cleaned it out so that we can get to some things, put some lights in here, and have the building inspector come in here and look at, make sure that we can work in here. And if we move on back, we'll go to the mezzanine level. And something we noticed too on the mezzanine level is that if you look at the trim um, around the sides, the metal trim at the, in the corners, it goes around the sides. Well, the trim over here on this side, it comes around and it follows the mezzanine level. And you'll see once we get to the top, it cuts around and goes back. This one doesn't follow around the wall. So if this was original, it would have followed around the wall. So this is still old because they used the metal lathe and plaster, but it's a, it was something that was put in after the design of the building. So as you start peeling back the layers, you can say, okay, this is not original. You know, it's probably, you know, not 100 years old, but it might be about 80. You know, it wasn't long after they, they blocked that in because they've tried to match it up pretty well um, with everything, but they didn't put the trim back in. Um, so that's something interesting. We've uncovered a couple things. There's a, a little closet under here that was just boarded up. We didn't even know. It's, this is a stairwell behind this wall. So, um, and it was boarded up probably 50 years ago from what was inside of it. Now we go back on up to the mezzanine level. So we go up this. There, this was the access probably for the shopkeeper, whoever ran it to go to get up to the mezzanine level, which was his, probably his office, maybe stock or supply or something like that. Don't hit your head on this pole when you come up because I've done that a bunch. Still got the original floors up here. Um, there was a shelf right here, and I was wondering how long that shelf had been here because it, you know, it looked like it was some aged wood. Similar to that. Yeah, similar to that. And what was really telling is the old um, electrical was stapled into it with, uh, with these old metal connectors. So that, that shelf was probably here for, you know, 80, 90 years. They, at some point, built a bathroom in. We're taking that out. We've already started on that. Um, again, some of the original iron, um, that's probably heating and cooling um, pipes right there. There was a wall right here, and for a while, when we were looking, I was trying to figure out how they accessed that part, what was the purpose of it. And finally, you know, I kind of noticed that, that this wall doesn't look like it, didn't look like it belonged here. And they had built a laundry room in, um, in this area for the occupants of the apartments probably. So this is how the shopkeeper would have come up the steps. He would have been able to access that this is a bathroom here, another bathroom here. Um, and he would have been able to access these apartments. And I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if this was just one big living area up here instead of it's now two apartments. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's about when we go out. When we, go out. we won't know because it was turned into two apartments or you know a long time ago because it's a lot of uh, um, originality in there. But you know it could have been two apartments to begin with. But it's it's going to be interesting once we start peeling back to see what's going on. So far, no original blueprints. Yeah, and we don't have any idea of what that is. So watch yourself coming through there. Again, this was a laundry room and we've tore out that wall so we can keep this door locked. But what you'll notice when we come out is here is the mezzanine door. Here's door two. This is mezzanine level door. And as you can see, here's the staircase that's gonna go up to two apartments that are actually on level two. We'll, we'll talk about that in a minute. But this hallway um, goes back to the boiler room. Bum, bum, bum. Don't step on my tools. So I'm still working back here. Getting the permission to turn the uh, power on was a big deal. Yeah. Once the building was really typically bad, it made it a lot less power because we were in the dark before. So this is our, or the boiler room. Still has the original, you know, I don't even know what that thing's called. Boiler, water heater, I don't know. It's, just, it's where all the steam pipe went through. Somebody will know, but I don't. Um, and the little coal grinder that fed it in, coal supply, I don't know if it's a grinder, but it just fed the coal into the bottom, it heated it, the water went through there. They used to call them blowers, but I don't know that old if it was still called a boiler or 
I don't know what it is. So, but if that's how the, the they load that and the coal would feed into it and then go and you can see all the pipes coming out of it running everywhere. So some of the original plumbing implements are in here too. Um, but what's, what's the biggest problem for us in here is the beam that's right above my head, uh, it's wood and it goes into probably a steel beam over there and it has um, basically rotted through at that part where you see, where you, you might hear the water level going through. So. It runs, it runs exactly the same amount all the time. But it doesn't get any deeper in here, so the water's going somewhere. I don't know where, that's it, where that is, but it's going somewhere. So, um, so that's good that it doesn't get any deeper, but we're gonna try to keep it dry. There is four water heaters down here, so they were still using it as a sort of utility room. And then around this, let me get over there. Around here is a pile of coal, um, probably six foot back and five foot high. So they still had, when they shut this down, they were, they were still using that coal and they never took it out. Um, and who knows when that was. And somebody told me I should look for coal, little coal tags in here. Um, it was something I didn't know about, but he, he said uh, when they delivered the coal, they had a little tag in them that said where it came from, so it could be you know, Stonega, Andover, you know, the, the places around here when they deliver it. So we'll be looking for that once we clean up, but I'm currently right in the middle of sticking this sump pump in here. So, so we gotta get this video finished. I got work to do. We're back near the door, which is uh, door number two going up the hillside. And when you come in straight through this door, there's this staircase. You would have made the left to go to the uh, mezzanine level in the uh, boiler room steps. But there are two apartments up here. And as you can see, they've uh, put in drop ceilings at some point in here. That part is not original. There's still, um, you know, original woodwork around a lot of the windows. Um, obviously they put in different doors, but there's still a lot of this original. This is like the, I think John measured, I can't remember, but I want to say that's like a eight inch baseboard. Um, they don't do that now. You see your picture. I think they call this the picture rail because they used to hang stuff from that. Um, this kitchen is beautiful. <laughs> um, and what, what we've been told is that as the roof failed, uh, they just slowly moved people out. So there's a lot of possessions that have been just kind of left places. Um, this is going to be the front, second door, or front, front, second floor apartment. And um, I'm sure some of this paneling got put in later, but as you can see, this is the curve in the building. So, um, and then these windows and that view out there is just amazing um, of downtown. So this is uh, the bedroom in this apartment. And then here's their bathroom. And I love this light fixture, but I'm sure it's not original, but it's unique. But as you can see, uh, there's one of those radiators we were talking about earlier. Um, but as you can see, there's quite a bit of of damage to the plaster. Here's a closet, which was probably built in later, um, just from the looks of it in the, in the paneling. Um, closets, most people had wardrobes. They didn't have closets back in 1900, so. And this is the other apartment. And this is the one we're really not gonna go through because it'd be really hard to get through there and not fall with a camera. But as you can see, there is a lot of, they've put in a drop ceiling at some point and had put in some insulation, but all of that has come down pretty much at some point. 
and I'm not even sure the door opens even more than that, but we're going to go back down. And this is, um, this is the front part of level two, back down to the mezzanine and we're going to go up to level three. So this is uh, an apartment that's on level two. It actually um, is door number three coming up the hillside. And this apartment um, is a little scary in places. <laughs> so we do not usually step on this part. It's really soft. If you'll come over here, you can see um, this is the side of the building the water's coming down on that you saw below. And you can see that that paint is bubbled up and there's actually a separation in the floor. So we do know that these upper floors have started to sink some because that beam is broken downstairs. Um, there's a hole there, but if you come here and look at the kitchen area, you can see that the whole kitchen is leaning forward because this is the wall the water's coming down. That's the most extensive damage on this floor. So they have a, um, they have a bathroom there. And if you look in through here, you can see like there's the brick wall of the building attached to us, which is going to be uh, the mercantile building. There's where it's built in, but um, that's where a lot of the major water damage has happened. We're going to go, um, let's go this way actually. So this side is a little bit sturdier, <laughs> but this probably would have been the living room. And as you can see, you know, we still got radiators. This woodwork has been painted, but you can see that a lot of it's the original. We can see some water has leaked down and obviously there's some water spots that have come through, but this side is in a little bit better um, condition. Someone has come in here at some point and added in some beadboard to this room. This is not original, of course, and there's a drop ceiling in here that needs to go. Um, this closet is also probably an add-on, as you can see, um, it's, it's been built in later. It seems like they did a better job, maybe, of, of um, closing it up. They either build it on later or they cut it off and they put the drop ceiling in, but to me it makes more sense because these shelves look like they might have been there before, but we're not really sure because nobody's located the blueprints. I'm going to, but from this window. Nobody's located blueprints or anything of that nature yet. So there's a lot that, you know, we're just going to be guessing about for a while. This is a two bedroom and it's got a, uh, it's got a closet. Now this one does look a little more original just because of the fact that it's kind of seamed in. So I think this closet did exist here before, but one of the things that we saw, we saw pictures and we knew from uh, somebody else that had flown a drone over that there was a hole, a square hole between our building and the mercantile building. So it was really cool to get in here and see what that was because um, we didn't really understand it. But level two and level three have this shaft and they started doing this around uh, 1900s. You were required to have windows in all the rooms in the city. And they also sometimes did this for airflow because as you know in the mountains we get a lot of humidity. So if you opened these windows, the air would flow through the apartment better because it had somewhere to go. So we think he did it for both reasons. Um, he had been of course out in San Francisco where they were probably already requiring the windows, they were requiring the natural light. But here in the mountains the airflow would have been just as important because they didn't have air conditioning. This would have been the only way to cool the building um, during the hotter months when there was a lot of humidity. So um, if you look in, you can see there's a little kind of ledge there. So that floor would be um, covering up the, the, the concrete on the bottom would be covering up the ground floor and it goes all the way up to the sky. When we were in the boiler room, John told you that there's still a pile of coal in. This would have been the coal chute. This is where they would have delivered coal to heat the building. Um, and this is, of course, boarded up, but typically they would have just raised it up and pulled the truck up here street level, and this is where they were putting the coal in. We're going to go into the top floor now, top floor three. 
So now we're in floor three. There are four apartments up here. And as you can see, we're still seeing radiators. Um, this was like kind of like a utility room in here. So if you look in here, you can actually see um, the brick of the building. There's some fuse boxes in here and some different things. Uh, but this was utility space from the beginning. All this woodwork, this door seems to be original. I think this is an older paneling. I think this existed for some time. Maybe, maybe not completely original, but it appears to me to be original because this baseboard, it's over top of it, it appears. This, of course, this top part was added on later and probably because the building started doing what it's doing on this side, which is plaster and wallpaper and it's peeling. Uh, we had the building inspector in here this week because um, we were concerned it's wet, it's moldy, but he tells us um, that this is, none of this is black mold, so that is good. And as you can see here, there's like some really bad damage in this area. And this is all, of course, coming from the failing roof. So priority number one is to stop the water underneath the building and fix the support beam to make sure the, the structure stays stable. But priority number two is gonna be replacing the roof so that we can stop this situation. This is gonna be the first apartment upstairs. And one of the things that I think is really cool about this radiator is it has, they would build these on so that they could set things or people sometimes would even set on these, uh, I've been told. Um, I had one of these in my dorm at William & Mary in 1996, and um, this kind of heat is, was really warm. It radiated, so you could put this on here and set things on it, and that's, who knows how long that, but that shelf is probably very, very old that's built on top of it. This one's kind of the same, but it's a metal one. So... And we have a lot of tenant stuff in here. You're gonna see more of this on this floor than anywhere. At some point they came in and they tried to put, um, this isn't really a drop ceiling so much, I don't think, I think it's just tile. Like they just put furring strips up in tile. Um, but there was a closet in this one and a bathroom at some point. And I don't know why the toilet is missing, but um, you know, somebody was in this apartment until at which point, I guess it probably had to be abandoned because you can see there's been a lot of water damage in this because we're on the back side of the building. And this is one of the smaller apartments. So you've got this living room and then you've got this kitchen. And again, you have your radiator. You can see a lot of the original pipe in here and the woodwork. And these are the metal cabinets, metal sinks. Um, some of these are in fairly good shape. So as we do things, we may, somebody's painted these at some point, the tops are really bad, but it's got the metal shelves on the side and everything. Um, I think these were probably put in later, but they are antique shelving. Of course, you can't buy metal shelves anymore. So it's something that um, we may actually uh, refurbish and use because they're not in bad shape at all. So Young's, Youngstown Kitchen, there's a label on there that says Youngstown Kitchen. So maybe we can look that up later. All right, so we're gonna go down here just a little bit more. And these are kind of interesting. Um, there's two of these boxes and we've kind of been talking about what they are and we haven't had time to look it up, but John thinks this is probably where they would have put the phones because back then uh, when phones were being installed, you had what were called party lines and you picked up the phone and you had to talk to an operator. And so he thinks that these two might've been party line uh, places for the top floor. Here is another apartment. This one was most likely kind of like an efficiency apartment as you can see Tons of ceiling damage. <laughs> like I'm literally probably looking at the wood that's under the roof up there. Um, but because most of the plaster has come down. The floor is pretty solid in here though, believe it or not. But this one was kind of an efficiency apartment. As you can see, somebody built like a small island here. And this is a very small kitchen. 
uh, around this corner, but it's um, it's got some metal cabinets in it. So this was a very small apartment. It's literally um, one cabinet and a stove. And this one had pretty much one bedroom. Here is your bathroom, which has the smallest radiator I think I've ever seen. It's really, really thin, but um, you can see the ceiling, the drop ceiling has kind of come down in here. And uh, you had a closet, and here now we're looking out um, from the top level. You can see a lot more skyline, and you can see um, that might have been like a, that looks like part of a chimney maybe sticking up there on the edge. And we can see some uh, airflow vents in the side of the building up here. But this is, this is what that same um, space looks like from level three. Now, this is all from a failing roof, all of this damage. But there, there's one of these boxes on this side which is why I think it might have been something else because it doesn't make sense to me that they would have had three, three phones on this level, but they might have. I don't know. I haven't had any time to try to reverse Google search it and see what it is. But if you look straight up here, we've got a lot of damage up here. And a lot of this will like just have to go. There's no, some of it, there's no way to repair it at all. All right, two more apartments to go. This one uh, looked like somebody at some point tried to put in like a floating floor, um, but this one literally looks like when the people left, like they pretty much kind of left in a hurry because um, they left a lot of stuff. There's like a Bible and medications. And um, the thing that I found, this cobweb has just happened in the last day or two. The thing, uh, that I found kind of interesting about this was just, this is, um, I think a bead, like a kind of like a bead board that was put in later for the ceiling part of it. But as you can see, it's kind of a small, there are um, little latches. If you look around this corner, these are the back sides of those boxes. And there's like a latch there. And this is the only one that I've been able to find. So I don't know why those were there but this is the kitchen and as you can see on this side like there's a lot of junk this one actually has a full cover over the radiator that white box covers a whole radiator but I mean they left shelves microwaves all kinds of things um, it's just kind of like encapsulated in time in here that looks like a VCR now this Fairly modern bathroom. Somebody did replace it. Looks like the tub in here because a lot of them have the the metal tubs. But this is the room that I actually posted the picture of. Um, I posted it actually this morning. So we're now on the third floor. One of the things that I think is interesting is look at the. Um, I think this was like the original design. This like woodwork kind of pattern at the top and the and this paneling. But I'm not an expert. But this looks like all the original trim. Um, that's an old phone line from back when they had to have phone lines and somebody's ran it literally all the way over there. There's an access door over here that's to the plumbing that somebody put in later. But if I can get over here without falling. What's so amazing is if you look out this window like you can just only imagine like what it was like back in, even when I was a little girl, I remember you couldn't park on Main Street in the 80s. Like it, we were still pretty full of life. In 95, Westmoreland shut down. I graduated in 96. And after that, we saw the steady decline, a very steady decline in population. But before that, you know, Main Street was full. And so you can just imagine living here and being able to look out this way at all of that activity there were more buildings some of these have just recently been torn down um, but you just had a gorgeous view and you can look out that way and kind of see over the over the bottom um, but this is the top floor corner apartment 
and it's in very bad shape right now. So, so you can see there's uh, some pretty heavy water damage here. This apartment's a little different, but one of the things that I like about this one, um, this is probably original wood floor and um, really what I love about this is that a lot of the woodwork didn't get painted. So I'm hoping a lot of the original woodwork, I'm hoping we can save a lot of it, but you have the radiator and at some point somebody came in and, and put this kind of uh, later, I don't know, this looks like painted paneling to me and probably came in later and put this uh, beadboard in on the ceiling and stuff here and these are definitely newer cabinets so this apartment at one point did get kind of a facelift as far as um, the kitchen but you still one of the things they didn't remove from anywhere was the radiator system it was probably too much work to do so but um, the windows are gorgeous I don't know if the blinds work or not in here but, like stuck. but you can see <laughs> You can see, um, you know, down on the main street. This is city living back then. And we got a bathroom here, which this bathroom, if you come through here, had um, a window, and this goes to that, um, to the air and light area that we've shown you from other areas so and this bedroom probably won't go in there still got the radiator in it still looks like it's got some hardwood flooring over there but as you can see it's uh pretty bad shape some of the trim looks good but <laughs> past that the uh, plaster and the ceiling Pretty much looks like all of this out here so pretty extensive um, you know you can see it's just crumbling so let's we'll see what we can save of it here's a calendar there's a calendar from 2018 we had some mail from 2013 and I thought that was the last but somebody apparently might have been up here in 2018 they might not have been legal tenants, but somebody was up here in 2018. And it's 2024, so that's only six years ago. And I can't imagine that all of this fell in in just the last six years, but we're going back down the hallway and we're gonna go out. And that's pretty much a tour of the Peak Building as it is today. What we're gonna to try to do, of course, is take everything back to make it look as original as possible. We're trying to get our hands on more photographs, but one of the things that you can see is when windows are more of like the original look or when something was switched out. Like this was a taller window at one point, like these over here. And when they replaced it, they used a smaller window and just boxed it in. Whereas it was this size originally. So details like that are things that we're going to back up and do um, in addition to, you know, um, just other things that might be on the facade that weren't original. So this uh, meter box isn't going to be used at all. So it will come off. The heat pumps will come off. The air conditioners will come out of the windows and we'll do something that makes it look more original and we can hide all of that stuff um, because that obviously uh, detracts from the uh, beauty of the building. So one of the things that we have to do, of course, is there's a lot of concrete damage to the steps. Um, John has also mentioned that they might have to entirely be dug out because back then they might not have left spacing between um, the building and the steps for expansion. We haven't gotten into that yet, but as you can see, they're in really bad shape. But a lot of people also don't realize how steep they are. Um, when I was a little girl, uh, they didn't run buses up on the hill, so we would actually get out here in town sometimes, and we loved to run up these, but it was a workout, because as you can see, they're all different sizes and levels. So you have some, you have a long one and a short one, and a long one and a short one, and a long one and a short one, then you have a long one and three short ones. So um, they just kind of did it with the rise of elevation they needed. They're not all consistent. Um, 
And I'm not really even sure that that would pass today's building code because I think there's a bunch of things that have to be done. So we, we have to get some people in here to advise us on it. Uh, but as you can see, they are in really bad shape. And uh, at some point we are gonna have to address the, the staircase issue. So here's some of the heat pumps and air conditioners we were talking about a few minutes ago as well. Um, things that need to be addressed as well as just all these lines. You know, these are old phone lines, old cable lines and things that were run for tenants in there, but none of that is necessary now. Um, nobody needs a phone line. You really don't even need a cable line if you've got Wi-Fi. So, um, and this pipe here was obviously done later. That's gonna come off. It's uh, very ugly, <laughs> for lack of a better word, sticking out of the side of the building here. That completes the tour of 315 West Main Street, which is the peak building. And um, we're gonna take you on some tours of some other buildings, but if you wanna follow along on our adventures as we renovate this building and other downtown uh, buildings, then follow along on social media. We're Appalachian Rising Ventures. And uh, we uh, hope you'll follow along on this adventure. It's gonna be a lot of fun getting to uh, restore the history of these buildings.